Welcome to my life. This film, it's got great humor, intelligence, and really original characters. That's Dragon's Breath. We're investigating some of those metaphors of life and death, right and wrong. What if I told you that God and the devil made a wager for the souls of all mankind? I tell you to stay in your meds. It's about morality and free will, supported by the supernatural world. You see them. They see you. And an action that's very exciting and fun. It's about the responsibility for the choices one makes. Into the light I come in. It's fantastical, but it's realistic. Heaven and hell are right here. We're smack in the middle. You never really know where it's going to lead you. My name's John. Constantine is based on the comic Hellblazer, but one of the things that I wanted to do with this movie was really try and set it in a reality. It's based on a comic book, but I did not want it to feel like a comic book movie. What was important was to pull forward the character story and to really create a cohesive mythology of heaven and hell existing alongside of us. John Constantine, when he was 15, took his own life in despair. He had the ability to, or has the ability to see what we call in the film uh, half-breeds, which are these kind of demons wrapped in human skin. And it kind of disturbed him. He kind of went to a place where he felt trapped and took his own life. He went to hell for two minutes. So what's happened is now the older Constantine has been diagnosed with a kind of terminal lung cancer. So he's trapped to go to, uh, to hell. I'm a suicide agent. When I die, the rules say I've got just one place to go. He knows he's going to hell, and he's doing everything he can to save his ass. So what he's doing, he's trying to exercise demons, send demons back to hell, and he, in a way, thinks he's sort of building up brownie points with God. This is Constantine. John Constantine. Asshole. We've always called him the Dirty Harry of the Occult. I mean, look, he's been to hell and back. He's seen it all, and he's world-weary. Smile pretty, you big prick. John Constantine's got, you know, strong morality, but his uh, ethics are a little blurry. You're trying to buy your way into heaven. What would you do if you were sentenced to a prison where half the inmates were put there by you? And on his kind of search for redemption, he uncovers a plot that there's this kind of force coming that wants to make a hell on Earth. Good mind your own business, exorcist. Constantine is not your typical hero. He is struggling internally with what's the definition of good and bad. And where does he fit into it? Hold the door. You're going down. Not if I can help it. John Constantine, if he has nothing else, he has a really fantastic sense of humor. It may be a dark one, but he has a great sense of humor. At least it's nice enough. I love the character. He's really fun to play. It's it's great to be angry and, you know, disappointed and funny. Keanu was really helpful in the, the final forming of the character because he had a really good take on him. And there are certain lines in the movie which were so constant. They just sort of emerged from him. It was wonderful. I know the circles you travel in, the occult, the exorcisms. I thought that you could at least point me in the right direction. Yeah, okay, sure. Rachel Weiss is playing this detective who comes to John because her sister jumped off the roof of a clinic. Uh, Angela, Rachel's character, doesn't believe that, that she committed suicide. Yeah, what kind of mental patient kills herself? That's just crazy. I feel like someone's got to her and brainwashed her some kind of like occult weird society and I come across this guy John Constantine I go and talk to him and he's completely unhelpful and very rude my sister was a devout Catholic that means if she'd taken her own her soul would go straight to hell where she'd be ripped apart over and over for all eternity I just think he's psycho after this first meeting John notices some kind of demons kind of going after this woman what is that Something that's not supposed to be here. 
she's never seen anything like this. And then as the story unfolds, he sort of has to take her on this adventure that she just can't believe. The way Constantine deals with it is, you know, he's got to do what he's got to do. 200 souls passed through this wooden steel at Sing Sing. Sure about this? No. <laughs> Me and I used to be a great friend uh, to uh, John Constantine. They were great partners, and he chose a uh, different direction. He's running this kind of safe house for angels and half breeds. The club is the one place where they can all, you can see good and evil basically out in the open. This isn't the usual game. I can feel it. Something's coming. Midnight's helping Constantine on his kind of search for redemption. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm with the guy you just... John! John! I'm just, I'm just testing him. I'm just testing. Chaz is uh, insanely intrigued by Constantine. He loves Constantine, wants to be Constantine, wants to be with Constantine, wants to do everything Constantine does. Look, uh, no offense, I, I just don't think that it's a great idea, you know, you go on a solo mission to save the world. I, that's, that's what I, that's my vote. There is a kind of emulation going on, and in the story, he gets his chance. Jazz is wanting to seek experience. Well, kid, you're gonna get it. What's been fun about it, too, is to kind of create this other world that relates to our world. It really starts with Francis. His instinct and his choices, I feel, that, you know, that he made on this project, they're really insightful and, and, and uh, surprising in the best possible way. Like, real strong. Oh, grab it. The idea was to go with the director with a visual sense, and Francis stood out because Francis came in and also talked about story and character. He's very prepared, he's open to a good idea, but he knows exactly what he wants. I had to sort of come up with these kind of original approaches to these different types of characters that we've seen in movies over and over and over again. Ever since the beginning, I wanted to cast uh, Tilda Swinton as Gabriel. I never asked to see. I was born with this curse. A gift. John, one that you've squandered on selfish endeavors. Gabriel is Constantine's intermediary with God. Gabriel is God's representative on earth. You are going to die young because you smoked 30 cigarettes a day since you were 15. And you're going to go to hell because of the life you took. Constantine wants to get to heaven and Gabriel wants everybody to get to heaven. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> Even though we have a great, big, epic, special effects laden story here, at the center of it is a man's struggle with the world. One of the things this movie is about the idea that there are laws that you can break and you go to jail, or there are laws you can break and go to hell. I don't believe in the devil. You should. He believes in you. It depends on what you believe in. Uh, like, for me, the movie is almost documentary real. Like, I'm that frightened. Because I'm religious and it hits you here and here and places you don't want to ever be hit on. It's sort of the definition of life, really. Trying to face life, you know, and do what you do on a daily basis to, you know, to survive. Things I've beaten. Things most people never even heard of. And now I'm going to be done it by this. Constantine is caught in the ultimate catch-22. He's the guy who's facing life knowing that he's not going to win and yet trying desperately to figure out a way even with that knowledge. Spooky. Balthazar. What is you on your way down? John Constantine and uh, Balthazar have been such enemies. My story was to just try and play opposite Keanu and, and play with him like a cat plays with a mouse. We were looking for, for different people to play Balthazar, and I knew who he was, you know, obviously because I come from the music video world, and he was the lead, lead singer at Bush. So we brought him in to read, and he was fantastic. He's just so clean and pristine, and that you just hate that guy's guts the second you see him. I, uh, I was born of this! I'm an evil, evil man. You can never be sure of anything, you know, just because I'm wearing a suit. <laughs> this has been very physical. And throughout the piece, he gets choked, throttled, and smashed, and kicked around so many times. One of the motifs of it is just like, let's knock the hero down. 
can you get back up? You know, it's like, you know, Constantine just kind of, all right, right, okay, here we go again. We've done so many things. You have to be a little bit athletic, I think. And uh, someone like Keanu is very experienced at doing physical work. R.A. Rondell, who's stunt coordinating, and Chad Stahelski, who I've worked with on the Matrix films. The relationship that, that I have with them is one of complete trust. They allow me to be in as much as I can possibly be in, in terms of, you know, doing the physical aspects of it. His participation level is so high. As a stunt coordinator, that's a godsend. He's somebody I know is going to participate continuously. He's a very quick study. I mean, you can tell him something, do a rough rehearsal of what it is, and he can pick it up that quickly. They're always so inventive. They'll do little twists on things that are, you know, that just, you're like, still, you know, wow, that's great, you know. They decided they're going to do this big sequence with the demons in, in the hydrotherapy room. So we got some of our best performers and uh, put them in the wires and tried to give different kind of looks and raps, and we had 12 guys fighting simultaneously. It's great. Three, two, one, action! Francis has put a kind of cool camera angle on it or a nice kind of way of telling that story. I needed to see this action for the gunfight from a high vantage point. So they brought me up on these cables and sort of slid me across the room. And I got to look down at the action, which was fun. You want to come down? Yeah. <laughs> I need to see what you see. You do this, there's no turning back. Understand? The film, it's got a nice vitality to it. Everything's not so obvious. Questions, is there an art to life? Maybe there is a there is a spirit world somewhere. It's really interesting. You look up good and evil. It's a totally different kind of movie that captures you because of the fact that it's so real. You know, that the world that we create in this film make you think and feel in terms of how we relate to the day-to-day -day in the real world. Close your eyes. And whatever happens, don't look.